Okay, something like that. Hello, Internet, so nice to see you. So, it's becoming kind of cliche on YouTube to find uh, videos of guitar players telling you that you do not need to learn scales in order to play guitar. And I'm like, what? I mean, it's an interesting situation here because uh, you have all those people, all those great players, good teachers, and they know all their scales, but they're telling that you don't need to learn it in order to play guitar. And honestly, I think that's clear, clear clickbait. Sorry, guys, I don't want to make any names, but if, you, if on your channel you have a video um, saying you don't, you don't need to learn scales to play guitar, you know who you are, okay? And this reminds me a lot, you know, when, when you meet really attractive people and they tell you that appearance doesn't, don't, don't matter, okay? Or really, really rich people and they tell you that money doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Everything matters, okay? But when you learn to play guitar, scales matter even more. Now, there is one thing I agree, though, with those people, and it is that if you learn your scales the wrong way, then they are completely useless. If you are playing your scales only up and down, so if you're playing... Um, okay, or by the way... Okay, it doesn't matter if you use three notes per string or the accursed cage system okay, or any other system of scales, if you play them only up and down, up and down, up and down, you are learning nothing, okay? On that, we agree. You don't have to learn all the scales. You don't even have to learn them in all positions, okay? But having scales, uh, having the knowledge of scales, totally helps and make everything much easier. And it also makes your technique on guitar much better, because just by learning scale, you get better. So, that's the thing. How? How do we learn scales? How do we make them useful? How do we make them musical, okay? And uh, um, to do all of these is gonna take quite a long time. So let me get you started in there, okay? And again, with the idea that this is not everything, okay? This is a 10-minute-ish video on YouTube, okay? So I can't really go through a complete full course on how to make scales musical, okay? Also because I have that course already, it's called Master of the Modes, and I'm selling it, okay? So, uh, again, shameless plug, sorry. How do we get started with that? We have to break up the scales, okay? And again, everything I'm doing right now works whatever scale you're using, uh, diatonic, pentatonic, exotic scale, etc., and regardless also of the scale system you use. So, you want to use the three note per string scales, okay, great. You want to use the cage system, Fine, use the cage system for all I care. Um, you want to use a strange system where you play one note, then three notes, then four notes, whatever. Whatever scale system you use, with however you write your scales down, this will work. So what do we do? We have to break up the scale. A way to break up the scale is to take a little melody and move it across the fretboard. How does that work? Let me take... A very simple scale, okay, I'm gonna do this in the B minor pentatonic, it's this one. And I'm gonna stay only in this pattern, it's the, mo it's the simplest, most basic scale pattern that everybody learns at the beginning, okay? So, you don't have to, do to use anything complex here, okay? That's the pentatonic scale. Okay, we invent a little melody, okay, and um, it doesn't have to be complex, so let's just play three notes, okay? Okay, I'm playing this D, this B, and this F sharp. Yes, it's also B minor arpeggio, whatever. It's three notes. That's what I care, okay? Okay, the important thing is that it's not just three notes in... It's not, it's not just in a row, okay? Three notes. Then what do I do? I see what is the intervallic structure of this um, little phrase. What do I mean with these big words, intervallic structure? Um, I simply mean that uh, that's the top note of the scale in this position. That's the second top note of the scale, so it's one note down. And these, is, and then these other notes I play, it's two notes down from this one. So this is going down one note in the scale, and then down two notes in the scale. Then I'm playing this idea down one, down two, starting from another note in the scale. So 
and then maybe I start from this one note here, and from this B, and then play the B, down one, and down two. Okay. So now I put together, I put together my first three notes, and then the next. Okay. Then I do it, I'm doing it from this other note here, maybe. Okay. So this note down one, down two, and when I start putting together all these. It's an exercise, it still sounds like an exercise, it still does not sound like music, but that's because you are learning to break up the scale, okay? You are creating a vocabulary for your hand. Of course, this little melody can be anything. I mean, you could just play, um, for instance, you could play this instead. So the first four notes. So you play the first four notes and then this, the, the, mm, the same thing by starting from the next note, and then the same thing starting from the next note, and then, okay. Okay, a very common thing here, for instance, is the Eric Johnson pattern. You start from the top and play five notes, and you start from the second note and play five notes, and then the third note and play five notes. And this sounds really square, but that's because I'm playing everything, picking every note. It becomes more interesting and musical if I put some pull-offs in there. Again, you can invent anything. Another little melody could be this one. And then I can take it around. Okay, or, or this one, that's just top note and this note here. Okay, that's in the pentatonic. What if I take uh, the diatonic scale? So I'm right now I'm playing the, um, a, the, the B, the B natural minor scale. Okay. Same deal, you take a little melody in the scale Okay, like those three notes, and then I am re replaying the same melody. Okay. Okay, and again, in a real piece of music, you will never play the whole thing. Okay, but that's a great exercise to getting used to not play just okay which is always the same um, and of course sky's the limit if you want to have more versatility you start playing um, different kind of uh, patterns so for instance one thing you can do here is to play all the intervals okay um, which, and I really like playing all the intervals because it really um, gives you a lot more versatility in your fingers and it also train your ears so I have the top note here and let's say I play this top note and I play a third down, so this D to B. And then I play the next uh, third, so that's essentially C sharp to A. And then the next third B to G, the next third A um, to F sharp. Okay, uh, this will be playing thirds, okay, because the interval between those two notes is a third. But you can play fourths. Uh, you can play this. This will be a fourth. That's technically more difficult because you have all those mini, mini rolling motion, rolling bars, whatever. Okay, 
uh, you could play fifths. So on the top note, I go a fifth down. Okay, and... Okay, or I could play sixths, and sixths are always my favorite. They're super melodic. And again, a sixth will be from this D down to this F sharp, and then... Okay. Um, at the beginning, sixths are a bit of a contortion, okay? You can play sevens, you can play octaves, you can play anything you want, and a variation would be to alternate the direction of those uh, notes. So, for instance, I can play in thirds. First time I'm gonna play top note, bottom note. The second time, rather than playing top and bottom, I'm playing bottom and top. So, before it was... Now it's... See, it starts to become a little bit more melodic in a sense. Um, coming back to the pentatonic... Um Okay, you can invent sequences however you want. For instance, one, one sequence I really, really like is this one. Starting from the bottom, I'm gonna play uh, this E note here, this D note here, and this B note here. And then I'm gonna move this up. Okay, and then uh, every time I can, I'm gonna put in a pull off rather than picking, you know? I'm gonna do it slow. Uh, I'm gonna do it slow but right. <laughs> if you get even just a little bit of speed on this one, this is it's very exciting, very rock. <laughs> Okay, and again, of course, in a real solo, you don't play the whole scale from bottom to top and vice versa. You just play this idea a few more times, a few, a few times, before doing something else. Okay, something like that. It's not just that you build music only based on these little melodies, but it really helps. And that's the thing, whenever then you improvise, You can use it to re recreate a phrase. So this, it's okay, and then later you can play it. You can move it to the scale. Okay, so a, a single phrase like this can gain a lot of longevity uh, because you can reuse this exact same thing but all across the scale. Again, there's nothing complex here, nothing super technical, nothing super fast. It's just how you start getting command of the melodic possibilities of the scale. That's how you study a scale. You don't put the scale up and down. You study the little melodic pattern inside the scale and try to make a little piece of music, a little, little piece of music here and there, okay? And then in time, those little pieces grow and then it becomes easy for you to improvise or to play melodically inside that scale. Now, that's not the whole story, of course, okay? That's a short YouTube video. There's no time to get through every single detail and all the story. But if you want to take the next step into that, I would recommend you guys check out my course Master of the Mods. Master of the Mods starts practically from scratch, which is good if you're a beginner because you 
are sure that you learn everything and it's even better if you're an advanced player already because we make sure that you have no holes in your knowledge and that you are thinking at those scales in the right way because it's not just how you play them. It's also and especially how you think about them that will make the difference in what kind of music you make and how familiar and how uh, easily you will be able to make music out of those. All the theory in Master of the Mods is made directly on the fretboard, so it's great, of course, for guitar players. It's made by, uh, for guitar players. And again, just check it out. Link on the top right. Top right is there. And if you liked this video, smash on that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, comments, anything you want to tell me, write them down in the comment. And of course, if you have questions about all that, write your questions. I love you when you guys write questions because I can make videos and give you all the answers. This is Tomas Zilio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com and until next time, enjoy!